<laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is really <laughs> dog and fox. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Good morning, Sentinel 2. Thank you so much for joining me as we are starting our next new topic of integration. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this one because you've already got a good deal of background knowledge. You've got all the basics of integration from the advanced course and you look at some more complicated techniques in extension one. I'll be showing you heaps more in this topic. So first I'm going to do is a bit of a warm up flashback type question. I want you to try and find the answer to these three integrals for me. Pause the video, see how you go. Okay, with the first one, hopefully you recognize that we can apply a logarithm here because we can make the top of the fraction look like the derivative of the bottom. Okay, we can multiply a two on the top by putting a half out the front. And now the numerator is the derivative of the denominator and that's when you can use logarithms. Okay, don't forget your constant, don't forget your absolute values. All right, so that's a question you could find in advanced math. The next one you would see in extension one, because in order to integrate this, we need to use inverse tan. Okay, so our integral for inverse tan, our standard integral on your reference sheet uh, would be something along the lines of integral of a over a squared plus x squared integrates to inverse tan of x over a. So we just need to put a 10 on the top here. So we'll put a 10 at the front, like in this fact, as I just said. And now this will just become inverse tan of x over 10. You got your 1 tenth out the front and you got your plus c on the end. Okay, question, uh, question c is very, very similar. It's the exact same integral, except instead of x squared, you have x minus 1 squared. Okay, and these two guys are so similar that even your answer is going to be very similar as well. It looks just like this. Okay, so the only thing that changed was instead of an x, we had an x minus 1. That's the same thing in our answer. Okay, the reason that works out so nicely is because if you wanted to do this integral properly, what you could do is substitute and let u equal to x minus 1. But because that's such a simple substitution, if u is equal to x minus 1, then du on dx is just equal to 1. So you get du equals dx. So if you really wanted to, you could rewrite this integral as 1 over 100 plus u squared du, do one tenth of inverse tan of u on 10, and then change u to x minus 1. But that's a lot of work when you can just say, well, I know what this answer is, so this is just going to be the same thing with x minus 1. Okay, so when your, when your substitution is really simple, sometimes you can just jump straight to the answer, and that's what we're going to be doing today, plus more, okay? So techniques we're going to be looking at today fall under the category of completing the square. Alright, so quite a lot of the questions we'll be doing in extension 2 is really just figuring out ways of writing really complicated looking integrals as more simple looking. Okay, so most of what we're going to be doing is simplifying with a little bit of integration at the end, basically. Here's our first example. We have the integral of 1 over 5 minus 2t plus t squared dt. This is actually from the 2011 HSC paper. All right. Here's how we're going to handle it. First of all, we're going to rewrite the integral in a bit more friendly form. I just like it when my quadratics are in the right way forward. And now, as you may expect from the title of this video, we are going to complete the square on the bottom of this fraction. Okay, so when you have 1 over a quadratic and you're integrating, a good option is to complete the square. So given that uh, this is a minus 2t, we would really love it if this 5 was a 1 because then this is a perfect square. So we'll just be really clever and instead of writing plus 5, we'll just write plus 1 and plus 4. That's the same thing, yeah? Now we can factorize and we get this. Okay. Now this is kind of similar to the third question in the flashback. This may not look like it right away, but it is actually something we can do with inverse tan because you've got 1 over something squared plus something squared. Okay. So we can make it even more familiar by putting a 2 up top, because remember this is like your a squared, so you want an a up here. So we'll put a 2 on the top and a half out the front. We'll use inverse tan. Okay, instead of inverse tan of x, it's inverse tan of t minus 1. 
but it's the same thing essentially, over A plus C, and there is your answer. Okay, so completing the square on the bottom, so it looks like this, so we can apply inverse tan standard integral. Okay. Okay, for our next one. Kind of similar, we have a quadratic on the bottom, but this time it's in a square root. So this is lending itself more towards using inverse sine or inverse cos. Okay, it's a bit trickier. Not, once again, from HSC paper, 2004. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, write it in a bit better way. Looks like this. Okay, I'm gonna write the x squared and the four x first, and the plus five, I'm just gonna let him chill over here. And what I'm gonna do is, because we need to complete the square, it's always easier to do that when what's with your x squared is a one. Completing the square with a negative there does get confusing. So my advice is factor the negative out of these two guys here. Okay, so we've got negative outside of x squared and negative outside of negative four x gives us positive four x. Okay. Now we are going to add something into this bracket here, into this parentheses, so that we have a perfect square. So what do we need to add? Well, we have minus four x, half of that is two, squared is four. So we need to add in a four in here. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? But if we've just added in a four, keep in mind that the negative at the front of this bracket, so what we've really done inside this square root is we've chucked in a negative four, okay? So if we wanna keep the balance and make it so we haven't ruined the question, we should really plus four on the end. Okay, so what we've done here is we've added in a negative four and we've added in a plus four. So all we've really added is zero. Okay, so you always gotta keep the balance and make sure you haven't changed it. Whatever you're putting in the bottom to make it more convenient, make sure you take it away if you need to or plus if you need to, whatever gets you is zero. That's basically the methodology. All right, so now that we've done that, we can write this as a perfect square factorized. Okay, we can swap around the order and write this as nine, take away x minus two all squared. Okay, the reason it looks like this is because now it's a bit more obvious to use our inverse sine standard integral. Okay, when you've got one over square root of a squared minus x squared, you do inverse sine of x on a. That's what we're doing here, okay? Our a is three. This is what's usually our x, this time it's an x minus two, but again, it's a straightforward substitution, so you can just jump straight for the answer. So it's inverse sine of x minus two over three. That's to get your constant. Okay, so these do take a, uh, a bit of practice before you feel comfortable with getting from this form into this form, but it really is just completing the square and just making sure you're taking away what you add in, okay? All right, so for our next one, we're finding the integral of one over the square root of x squared minus six x plus 18. All right, now to do this, we need to use this identity here. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna involve inverse sine or inverse cos, because it's pretty similar to the last example. But the way we're gonna approach this is very different, and I'll explain why. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna complete the square on the bottom, which means we're gonna write this 18 as a plus nine and a plus nine, because now x squared minus six x plus nine is a perfect square and can be factorized. So getting to this point, it looks similar to last time, because last time we had nine minus a variable squared. This time we have nine plus a variable squared. So going back to the last example, when you have it in this form exactly, you can use inverse sine, but if this was a plus, or if these two guys were swapped around, you wouldn't be able to use inverse sine, you would have to use this identity. Okay, so using this, we can apply that our x or our x squared is gonna be the x minus three squared, and our a squared is just our nine. So our answer just looks like this. Okay, we've got natural log of x, which is the thing in here, x minus three, and then we've got this, and basically just the bottom of the fraction. Okay, the square root with everything inside, plus your constant. You can expand this and tie it up, but that's a perfectly simple answer. We're just gonna leave it like that. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on these questions because this identity up here used to be on the list of standard integrals, which was kind of like a mini formula sheet that students got uh, in the HSE exams before 2012. Since 2012, students have had a reference sheet and this formula, this identity, has not been on it, which is why I haven't seen a question in this form since 2011. Okay, so 
this is a really useful identity in terms of the broad spectrum of, of integration, but in terms of our course, you're very unlikely to use this result, but I thought I'd show you guys anyway, just so you are aware of it, okay? All right, if there's any more questions about that, let me know. Moving on to the next one. Fourth example, we have uh, the integral of one over t squared minus three t plus four. Because this one doesn't have a square root, it's gonna be an inverse tan one. This is pretty similar to the first example, but it's a bit tougher because completing the square with an odd number is always a bit more messy, a bit more complicated, okay? So right now we have a four here, and we've got to think, what would we prefer this number to be? Well, the way we complete the square, as you know, we take this and we halve it to get three on two, and then we square it to get nine on four. So this is a four, but I want it to be a nine on four. So here's how we do that, okay? We're gonna add in a three on two squared, like I said, but to do that, we'll also take away a three on two squared. So all you've really done here is added zero, which doesn't change the value of the function. So now that this is in this form, it is it looks a bit messy, but it is a perfect square. It can be factorized as t minus three on two, all squared. Here you've got minus nine on four, and you've got plus four, okay? We can simplify this, writing the minus nine on four plus four as seven on four. And now, like I said, it's a bit messy, but it is an integral we can use inverse tan for. We have one over, um, we can just call this x squared plus something squared. This is just, um, this is the square root of seven on two squared, isn't it? So that's your base piece that you need up here, okay? This is like your a squared, you need an a up here. Okay, so that's the next kind of messy part. We need the square roots of this term on top, so I'm gonna put a square root of seven on two in the numerator. So to keep the balance out the front, I'll put a two on the square root of seven. Okay, because multiplying these together, we're gonna to get one. So again, I haven't changed the value of the integral. I've just written it in a, I know it looks terrible, but it is better in terms of integration. Okay, so this is, this is pretty, but this is useful. I know which one I'd rather be. Okay, so now we can use inverse tan. This is our x and this is our, our a, our root seven on two. So we end up with the two on root seven out the front, tan inverse of x, which is really t minus three on two, divided by a, which is root seven on two, plus your constant. We can tidy this fraction up by multiplying top and bottom by two. But uh, yeah, that's as best as we can do. It's not, it's not picture perfect, but it is correct. And that's better. All right, that was exhausting. Now for the last one today, this is definitely a challenge question. And this falls under the category of, if you haven't seen it before, yeah, it's a pretty tough question. But I think you'll agree that the solution is just so beautiful that I, I just couldn't avoid showing it to you, okay? All right, let's work through it. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to write sine of 2x, which is really the only thing we can change here. I'm sure you know that sine of 2x is 2 sine x cos x. That's one of your identities from extension 1. And because you're in extension 2, you are an extension 1 professional. All right, here's where it gets really tricky. We're going to write the plus 2 here as plus 1 plus 1. Okay. The reason we're gonna do that is because now, why would you write plus one when you can write plus sine squared plus cos squared? <laughs> it's just crazy, hey? So sine squared plus cos squared is obviously one. So you've really written this as one plus one plus two sine x cos x. I want you to stare at that for about five or 10 seconds and think to yourself, why, why oh God, why have you done this? Why have I written this like this? All right, if you said to yourself, because this is a perfect square, you are an absolute genius. This is a perfect square. This is if you had sine x plus cos x all squared. Okay, this is like a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Might have to watch that a couple of times. All right, why does that help us? Well, because we can substitute here, all right? This is something we'll be doing a lot more of later on in the topic, so you probably wouldn't have to spot this right away. 
but a pattern that you kind of look for is that when you have something that's really complicated, but somewhere else in the integral, you have the derivative of that something, it's going to work out nicely, okay? You'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. If I substitute sine x plus cos x, well, first thing we need to do is figure out what du on dx is to get rid of this guy, okay? So if we do du on dx, sine goes to cos, cos goes to minus sine, and now if I move this dx across, I get that du equals cos x minus sine x times dx, okay? Now, why is that so cool? Because, well, cos x minus sine x dx is what I already have on the top of the integral. Okay, so I can really just change this top line to just du. Okay, and just like that, suddenly it's a really, really nice, convenient integral. This is just inverse tan of u, and it works out perfectly. Okay, don't forget to back substitute. That u is sine x plus cos x. Of course, don't forget your constant. And there's your answer. Okay, so a big part of integration in extension two is being able to spot a substitute. In extension one, when you're substituting nine times out of ten, the question will give you the substitution. Okay, in extension two, it's completely different. You've got to be able to read the integral and know when to substitute. Okay, we'll be doing a big lesson on being able to spot substitutes later, but I just thought this was a cool question using inverse trigonometry. So, yeah. Hopefully you either learn something or enjoy something. Um, for more practice for you guys, you can have a look at Howard Mathematics, the first exercise on page 271. Um, that's actually where I got that last question from, so shout out to Howard Mathematics for that really cool question. I just really love the step of following the plus two as this, as sine squared plus cos squared. I just think it's really ingenious, and I didn't spot it, so if you did, you're smarter than me, so well done. All right. Exercise 4.1, page 71, rip into it guys, and I will catch you next time. I'll be uploading another integration video at the end of this week to keep you guys very busy. Alright, take care. I'll see you next time. Finishing off with a puzzle. You guys know I love these. It's a, a phrase or a person or something. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. I'll have the answer in the next video. See you guys.